the next topic is into susception into susception is telescoping of one portion of bowel into another so for example if this is a bowel and if there is telescoping of one portion of bowel into the other this bowel is going inside this bowel so this is known as into susception okay now it is most commonly seen in children's which age group 4 to 10 months generally what is the hypothesis behind intussusception occurring in children of 4 to 10 months that at the time of weaning there is increased chances of infection and this infection will lead to a pears patches hypertrophy and this leads to diarrhea pears patches hypertrophy and the ileum or the terminal ileum generally goes inside the colon okay or the cecum and it leads to ileocolic type of intussusception okay now what is the types of intussusception in types the most common type is ileocolic which i have told you ileocolic overall it is of multiple types it can be ileocolic ileo ileocolic ileo ileal and the least common is colocolic now there is another question which is the most common type of into susception in adults and the correct answer is colocolic okay so now this is into susception now this is a small intestine here this is a small intestine this is a large intestine this segment of small intestine when it goes inside like this it is into susception okay now this is into susception okay so the part which is receiving the other portion okay is known as into recipients how to remember the recipient is into recipients okay the part which goes inside is into susceptum okay this is apex and apex is most prone to gangrene or ischemia this is important what is into susceptions what is into susceptum now what is the hypothesis that in 4 to 10 months that is at the time of weaning there is increased risk of infection diarrhea or the rotavirus diarrhea then there is a pears patches hypertrophy then there is into susception which is generally the ileocolic type okay this is the hypothesis otherwise the most common identifiable lead point for into susception is meckel's diverticulum
generally we are unable to identify any lead point if we are able to identify a lead point it is meckel's diverticulum and this meckel's diverticulum is followed by polyp the second most common lead point is a polyp okay that is in children now most common cause for intussusception most common tumor most common tumor for intussusception in children and in adult okay most common small bowel tumor in children is lymphoma and it is the one which is responsible for intussusception or the most common intussusception in adults it is villus adenoma which is responsible for colocolic intussusception which is most common in children it is lymphoma okay now what is what all are the clinical features generally the mother tells that the child is having lot of pain sudden pain lot of pain in which the child cries a lot there is sometimes vomiting also and child pulls his legs towards the abdomen and child is normal after some time and whenever the child is passing motion there is some amount of blood along with the stool which is red jelly current or red current jelly type of a stool okay so these are the clinical features that the child cries a lot at the time of pain child pulls leg towards abdomen and there is bilious vomiting then there is asymptomatic episode in between the attacks and in motion there is presence of small amount of blood or small amount of stools which are mixed with blood this is known as a red current jelly stool so the red current jelly is seen in intussusception now on clinical examination we are able to feel a sausage shaped mass okay in the lumbar region and the right iliac fossa is empty because of this intussusception the whole of the ic junction region or the terminal ilium it goes inside the colon and the right iliac fossa is empty okay and the mass is palpable in the lumbar region and this is a sausage shaped mass which is palpable in the lumbar region so in clinical findings or clinical findings examination clinical examination a sausage shaped mass present in lumbar region okay and the right iliac fossa is empty which is known as sign of dans okay now there is like this that a mass is palpable here and what is the treatment or what is the investigation for diagnosis investigation generally we go for enema why enema 
because it is both diagnostic and therapeutic. Okay. Nowadays we are preparing air enema over barium enema. So air enema is preferred over barium enema. Okay. So suppose we are giving air enema and the intussusception resolves. Okay, if there is a second intussusception, then we should go, we should do a repeat air enema. And if there is a third recurrence or third time recurrence is the only indication for surgery. Okay, so if recurrence after air enema, we should go for repeat air enema. And then what is the indication of surgery? Is third recurrence. Third recurrence is the indication for surgery. What is the surgery that is performed? It is ileocolectomy. Resection of the terminal ileum, cecum, and ascending colon, and ileo transverse anastomosis. Okay. Now there are certain signs which are asked frequently. I'll first enumerate them, then I'll show you the picture. Okay. So what all are the radiological signs? On barium enema, barium enema signs are very important. It is there is claw sign and coiled spring sign. Claw sign and claw coiled spring sign. Okay. Other signs which are seen in X-ray, uh, target sign and meniscus sign, sign seen on ultrasound are uh, target sign. Target sign is generally if there is a bowel in bowel, okay, then this kind of appearance will be seen which is a target sign and there is a pseudo kidney sign. Okay, this barium picture is very important. Now they will give you the history and they will give this barium picture and this kind of image will be there. This kind of claw sign is seen in intussusception, claw sign. This is very important, claw sign is seen in intussusception. Coil spring is generally I do not think they will give but this claw sign is easy to interpret and this is very important. So this is about intussusception.